there are dozens if not hundreds of different longevity supplements out there that may have some beneficial effects on your longevity in some way or another but they definitely have a wide degree of effectiveness some of them are very effective and very worth it whereas others not so much so in this video we're gonna do a tier list of all of the longevity supplements that i could find and some of the supplements that have some longevity effects but do you want to slow down aging and live longer if yes then i'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock if you're interested then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details it's showtime so first supplement on the list is gonna be tmg or trimethylglycine so i personally am a huge fan of tmg as a compound obviously you can get it from food but as a supplement it also has some interesting effects obviously the biggest beneficial effect has to do with methylation if you have poor methylation genes then tmg is gonna be quite um, important supplement to take and uh, when you're talking about the aspects of biological aging then poor methylation is something that does accelerate aging quite a lot as well and uh, with these dna methylation age tests that measure your biological age then uh, upping your tmg intake from dietary sources has been found to reverse or slow down the aspect of biological aging so tmg is certainly a supplement for poor methylators i would say is like a must and uh, for non-poor methylators so like people who have good methylation genes then it still has some interesting effects because it can also even have some exercise performance effects and obviously supporting methylation and helping to lower homocysteine which is also one of the effects of tmg uh, is still very worthwhile so i would put it you know it's very safe and uh, it has quite an effective like you know let's say result from the use of it so i'll put it into good tier it's not god tier because we don't have any direct like even like mouse studies that would show that it extends lifespan or something like that but it uh, definitely has you know indirect effects on longevity and aspects of uh, biological aging glucosamine sulfate another very cheap and very safe supplement i take it uh, three grams every day and of course usually glucosamine is associated with like joint health and osteoporosis and things like that which is true it does help with those conditions but interestingly enough there are like a few human epidemiology studies finding that glucosamine use is associated with reduced mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease because of the anti-inflammatory effects primarily and uh, because of that i'll put it also into the good tier that it's very safe it's very cheap you know you would want to support your joints and tendons pretty much everyone would want to do that and uh, there are like actually some you know evidence to suggest it might even have some uh, like longevity effects so i'll put it it's better than tmg i would say uh, because it's kind of universal for almost like everyone curcumin so uh the kind of uh, curry supplement or the uh something that you can get from turmeric so curcumin uh, is also very powerful anti-inflammatory it certainly has many studies showing that it helps with uh, like aspects of joint pain and inflammation in the body by boosting glutathione so uh, i do think that curcumin is also especially like if you get it from dietary sources if you just spice your food with turmeric and curry then uh, that's a very good thing in my opinion and uh, you know that's part of the reason why indian people have very low rates of arthritis for example and uh, part of the reason has to do people think that uh, it has to do with the curcumin intake there is no like lifespan uh, effects like i haven't seen any studies showing that curcumin extends lifespan but uh, yeah it does just have a, like a very powerful anti-inflammatory effect but the issue is that it can also like blunt some of the effects of muscle growth especially if we take it uh, post-workout so it's uh, yeah something has some nice anti-inflammatory effects but i would put it into like okay tier it doesn't have like any powerful you know kind of effects that you wouldn't get from other anti-inflammatory sources uh, but it's still kind of easy let's say dietary intake is for sure very beneficial but whether or not you should supplement curcumin depends on like other factors and i would say that the supplemental curcumin has less evidence and it certainly isn't as like safe than a dietary curcumin and the same applies to sulforaphane supplements i think they're okay they boost glutathione but whether or not you need it <laughs> depends on like yeah like your baseline inflammation and uh, yeah like because they also suppress the muscle growth pathways then they might not be like most suitable all the time resveratrol so uh 
you know, <laughs> this is kind of the most controversial supplements in a lot of ways. Uh, it's hyped up to be like the most powerful longevity supplement. But when you actually look at the studies, then uh, no, not so much. Like, yes, in some mouse studies and some nematode studies, <laughs> they do find that it has life extension effects. But, um, you know, obviously the evidence in humans is very limited. And uh, in humans, it actually has been found to have quite a lot of negative side effects, such as reduced VO2 max, reduced testosterone, and even reduced muscle anabolism. So I'll put it into the bad tier. Like resveratrol is very beneficial if you have like diabetes and metabolic syndrome and high cholesterol, for example. But uh, in otherwise healthy people, you know, it depends on what you're kind of uh, valuing right now or what your goals. Like if you want to improve like your VO2 max, then I would certainly take it out from your stack. Rapamycin is uh, certainly the most powerful, most potent longevity drug in the world. Like it has a lot of animal studies showing that it extends lifespan and uh, the effects can up be up to like 60% increase in lifespan, which is the like largest effect, uh, at least uh, based on like what's, 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 what's out there. So it certainly is like, you know, God tier in terms of the effect of actually extending lifespan in animals. You know, hum the issue with human studies is that we don't have any uh, like actual human studies showing whether or not rapamycin actually does have longevity effects. I do think that it does. Like we just don't have the studies yet. Maybe in like five years, we actually will have a human clinical trial showing that it has like actual life extension effects in humans. So, so based on that, I would put it like in the good tier based on the human studies. But uh, yeah, we'll try to rank it, you know, trying to take all things into account, so to say, like, uh, we try to consider all the possible variables from a for a human living in a in a free world, if that makes sense. And rapamycin, you know, it has a few side effects. There was this recent questionnaire based study looking at recreational users of rapamycin. Uh, so people who take rapamycin off label and uh, to see what are their experience with rapamycin and the biggest side effect was like mouth soreness and overall they did report that like maybe it was placebo but it was like they did report that they felt better in some ways or they felt that they were aging slower which is very subjective obviously but uh, just because it is the most like powerful in terms of life extension i'm going to put it into the god tier and metformin as well i'm going to put into god tier because it has the most strongest effect like it's the most potent out of all these longevity supplements in terms of life extension and anti-aging effects so metformin in diabetes certainly extends life expectancy and makes them live longer in non-diabetics the evidence is less clear whether or not it will extend their lifespan uh, but uh, you because it is so powerful as a anti-diabetic drug i think it could even be used as rec as a rec recreational supplement but uh, yeah, you know, the protocol for that obviously varies between people. Berberine is considered like natural metformin that uh, has similar effects in terms of lowering blood sugar. Obviously, it's not as powerful as metformin in terms of lowering bl blood sugar. Uh, but it uh, is a good alternative for a non-diabetic person who wants to like si stimulate similar pathways in the body as metformin does but with less side effects. So metformin also has some side effects in terms of VO2 max and uh, testosterone and uh, muscle growth. So, uh, but berberine has, you know, similar effects with a, li with a little bit less side effects, <laughs> but berberine still can inhibit muscle growth. So it's not, you know, it's, a, it's not like a get out, of get out of jail free card. It has similar side effects. So I'll put it into like a good tier because, you know, it's a good uh, way to mimic some aspects of, you know, like rapamycin use or metformin use without actually taking these compounds. And uh, there are no like a lot of life extension effects from berberine, but it does again help with aspects of metabolic health and uh, diabetes. So you can use this on uh, like uh, cycling it. Like if you don't have diabetes, then you just cycle it on some days. Creatine, I, I think uh, is good. I'm going to put creatine into the good tier because creatine has a wide range of longevity effects in terms of muscle growth, muscle strength, muscle power, and uh, just like bone density and brain aging cognition. So creatine has both cognitive and physical benefits that are beneficial for slowing down aging and longevity. So uh, that's why it's going to be a good tier, but it doesn't have any like life extension effects, like giving even creatine to animals 
hasn't like extended their lifespan. So it's just it is a more like a health span supplement, which means that it's extending your health span. You maintain functional fitness and longevity for longer, but you don't necessarily live longer, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's uh, certainly a very good supplement. The only downside to creatine can be that for some individuals, it could cause damage to the kidneys if their uh, kidneys are already like they have some renal insufficiency or uh, some other kidney damage already, then uh, for those individuals, creatine isn't recommended. Um, but uh, creatine can also reduce the EO2 max if you uh, take it. So if you're trying to like boost your cardio or trying to increase your EO2 max, then I wouldn't use creatine in that period of time. Next up, we have uh, aspirin, which uh, is also like a more over-the-counter pharmaceutical, and uh, it's still pretty safe like uh, there's very few like uh, side effects compared to like rapamycin or metformin so to say like uh, aspirin does have some uh, you know anti-inflammatory effects and it could have like some life extension effects in as well in some animal models it's just that in healthy people that have in some reports that aspirin could increase the risk of uh, gastrointestinal bleeding and other issues like that so my stance on aspirin is that uh, you want to use it only in a microdose, so like um, microdosing aspirin in a situation of high inflammation, so like sleep deprivation, circadian mismatch, whatever else, like some infection, uh, that can be a good anti-inflammatory to use. But uh, chronic use probably has, you know, yeah, it might increase the risk of this gastrointestinal bleeding as reported by a few uh, studies. So um, I'll put it into okay tier. So it has a few side effects, so you don't wanna take like chronically, but uh, the anti-inflammatory benefits are certainly like worthwhile. K calcium alpha ketoglutarate. So uh, this one is um, interesting. You know, calcium alpha ketoglutarate is not the same as the regular alpha ketoglutarate. And we have at least one study showing that using the calcium alpha ketoglutarate supplement reduced biological age in humans as measured by the DNA methylation clock, the Horvath's clock. Now, of course, you can make the argument whether or not this Horvath clock, uh, is it even relevant? Does it actually measure your biological age? You know, of course, I think it doesn't tell you like your entire biological age. It just tells you one aspect of it, which is the DNA methylation. So uh, it does benefit DNA methylation, apparently. And uh, your alpha ketoglutarate levels uh, do decrease with age so you have less AKG in the body and calcium AKG is the best way to like raise your AKG levels in the body so AKG is involved in the Krebs cycle and uh, energy production and those kind of things and it apparently also supports methylation which is very beneficial for uh, longevity but you know that's only just one study that we have right now we don't have a bunch of other studies <laughs> about this uh, compound so because of that you know I think um uh, it's expensive, like it's uh, a bit more expensive than some of these other like trimethylglycine or glucosamine, definitely. So I'll just put it because of that, I'll put it into the okay tier. We do have one study showing that it has, like slows down aging or reverses the biological age, supports methylation, etc. But uh, that's, that's pretty much it and it's ex expensive. So it's not something that I would prioritize, if that makes sense. Melatonin, I think is gut tier because both as um, a hormone produced by a body and as a supplement it has a lot of anti-aging and longevity benefits so first of all melatonin as a hormone the hormone that your body produces every night when you go to sleep uh, has a wide variety of longevity all the longevity pathways are regulated by melatonin so all the repair processes dna repair sirtuins autophagy nad recycling you know the entire gambit of your body is uh, regulated by melatonin in your sleep and if you have low melatonin, which happens with age, so your body produces less melatonin the older you get, then that's, that's where you start to see fragmentation in sleep, poorer sleep quality, and also the other aspects of aging. And uh, that's, what, that's a huge issue. So you want to make sure that you, you know, maintain the production of natural melatonin as, as long as possible. But as a supplement, we also have a ton of studies showing that supplemental melatonin also improves health and improves aspects of aging. So starting with macular degeneration, ending with high cholesterol, 
And, you know, there's a bunch of other animal studies as well, like testicular protection, or, you know, it protects against a lot of oxidative stress because of the anti-inflammatory effects of melatonin. And it's pretty safe, like uh, in reasonable amounts. So it doesn't suppress your natural melatonin production. That's a big myth. Your body still produces melatonin if you stop taking it. So it doesn't work like TRT that uh, it still has. Your, your, your body still maintains the ability to produce melatonin if you stop supplementing, so you don't have to worry about that. The only negative side effect of melatonin is that it can be contraceptive, so it can reduce fertility in women at least, and uh, it can postpone puberty. So you definitely don't want to give melatonin to children, and you don't probably want to take melatonin, you know, you don't want to take it before you're like over 20 years old, because, you know, if you're 18, then you're still going through some aspects of puberty, if that makes sense. And, and that's the only side effect. And the contraceptive effects start at like 75 milligrams of melatonin, which is obviously a very large amount. And usually you would take only like 0 0.1 to 1 milligram, maybe 3 milligrams. 3 milligrams is the pharma, pharma dose. So, uh, and uh, I do think that for the elderly, melatonin supplement is very beneficial. But uh, before that, you can like, you know, cycle it. If you want to boost your sleep quality every once in a while or want to catch up on some lost sleep, the melatonin is kind of a very good one for that. Vitamin D3, so I think that's also God tier because obviously you don't get a lot of the, all, the, all the benefits of sunlight from vitamin D. Like you get the UV radiation, you get the circadian rhythm alignment, you get the nitric oxide boost, you get the other bunch of anti-inflammatory effects from sunlight that you don't get from a vitamin D3 uh, supplement. But we do have a bunch of uh, human studies showing that uh, vitamin D3 use is associated with reduced mortality. So uh, I think that's a pretty high quality evidence uh, or you know, high degree of certainty that vitamin D uh, supplementation by keeping your vitamin D levels, uh, vitamin D blood levels normal has anti-aging and longevity benefits. And the side effects are pretty minor. Yes, in very large doses, it could have like some, um, you start to leach like some calcium from your bones, but that generally applies to like very large doses. If you take like a maintenance dose, which is like 2000 to 5000 IUs, then you, you don't get that at all. And chances are it just helps you to uh, normalize your blood vitamin D levels, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're anywhere, you know, starting from Central Europe to upward to Northern Europe, then you probably would benefit from taking vitamin D, especially in the darker months. You probably don't need to take it in the summer months, but at other times of the day when you get less sunlight, then it certainly is worth it. If you live in closer to the equator or in the Mediterranean, then you probably don't need a vitamin D3 supplement. So it depends also on your like blood vitamin D levels. And, uh, you know, why your blood, vitamin D levels in the blood might be low could be because of other reasons, not just lack of sunlight. If you have too much body fat, then your body, vitamin, vitamin D levels can be low. If you're not getting enough sulfur, then your vitamin D levels can be low. So obviously there's many things that contribute to your vitamin D levels, not just sunlight. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the reason it's in God tier is because it's safe and it improves a very important biomarker, which is your vitamin D, D3 levels. And we do have human studies showing that it does like reduce or reduce the risk of mortality in, in humans. Magnesium, I also think is God tier because it's very safe. <laughs> it pretty much has no side effects almost. You know, you would have to take like maybe 10 grams or something <laughs> to maybe get some side effects. But you know, the only side effects for magnesium supplements could be that you get diarrhea, maybe some arrhythmia for some people, but you would already have to have high blood magnesium levels, or you could be like low in sodium or low in potassium. But uh, yeah, like risk of getting arrhythmia is much higher if you take like potassium, for example, compared to magnesium. So generally, the biggest side effect of magnesium could be diarrhea. And uh, if you take only like 200, 400 milligrams a day, then uh, you're just improving your blood magnesium uh, levels, if that makes sense. Vitamin K2, I also put into the gut tier because again, it's very safe, it improves uh, you know, heart health, and uh, we have some uh, human studies also showing the association between vitamin K2 and reduced mortality and reduced heart disease, which is obviously one of the biggest, it's number one killer in the world, which is heart disease. And K2 from both dietary sources as well as supplement could be uh, worthwhile for sure. Fish oil is a controversial one. On one hand, we have you know, a bunch of studies showing that omega-3s, fish oil, even if it's the regular rancid fish oil, 
based on the studies, at least fish oil use is associated with reduced heart disease and reduced mortality. Uh, some studies find a stronger association, some other studies find uh, not a significant association, but the overall, uh, at least based on my understanding, is that the overall association is that it's still uh, more beneficial than not, uh, or the association is there for reduced mortality and reduced heart disease specifically. So based on that, it should be got here. But because I do think that most of the fish oil is like worse quality, I'll put it into good tier. What I recommend is more like uh, cord liver oil or krill oil is generally a lot better than a regular fish oil because the regular fish oil is probably rancid or is be probably become oxidized to a certain extent and uh, krill oil is less oxidized or less likely to be oxidized and cord liver oil uh, as well if that makes sense. CERT6 is a very novel compound and uh, it's uh, derived from uh, seaweed and the biggest effects have to do with like DNA repair and circadian rhythm uh, alignment and anti-inflammatory effects through the, through the sirtuins. But uh, yeah, this is a very new supplement. We don't have almost any studies, and uh, but it doesn't have any apparently negative side effects. I've been taking CERT6 for yeah, like over a year and uh, I haven't experienced any negative side effects. So I think it's safe. And But the issue is that yeah, like the benefits of it are limited. So we don't have enough evidence to definitely say that it has any like anti-aging or longevity effects. So I'll put it into like okay uh, tier and it's a bit more expensive as well. NAC is got tier because we have actual human clinical trials combined with glycine and NAC. So we'll put glycine here as well immediately. <laughs> so the glycine NAC combo, you know, it, it could be even higher here. I think it's a kind of staple in a lot of ways that uh, both the glycine and NAC increase your glutathione levels. And we have human clinical trials showing that the Glynac combo uh, reduces hallmarks of aging and improves functional outcomes of aging, like muscle strength and gait speed and just body composition. So all those things improve upon the use of glycine and NAC. So we have you know, at least a dozen, I think, uh, of uh, human trials with this combo of supplements. And it's the most, I think, the most safest and most researched like actual longevity supplement in humans, so to say. And I'm a huge fan of both of these. Uh, glycine has additional longevity effects through increasing autophagy. So the cell recycling, it improves the clearance of junk material from the cells and the uh, aspect of methionine restriction. So glycine also mimics methionine restriction and prevents the rise of homocysteine, which in excess can increase the risk of heart disease. And methionine, like in large amounts, also is associated with cancer and shorter lifespan in animal models. So uh, you don't want to get too much methionine, you want to balance it with glycine. And the easiest way to do that is to kind of take a small amount of glycine as a supplement and combine it with NAC, so you get the glutathione boost. Glycine alone also increases glutathione and NAC alone also increases glutathione, but combining them together apparently uh, is more effective. CoQ10, so uh, this supplement is mostly known for mitochondrial function and heart health. Now, we do have, yes, some uh, human studies about this, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a lot. And uh, I think that CoQ10, it doesn't have any like actual life extension studies or reduced mortality studies. So I'll put it into like good tier. It's uh, good. <laughs> it doesn't have like any like real side effects, uh, but uh, it's a bit more expensive again. And whether or not you actually would get any benefits in terms of longevity, is still up to debate, but I think that it's good. <laughs> NMN, so uh, this NAD booster and nicotinamide riboside, I'm gonna pretty much uh, judge them on the same like criteria. So both of them raise NAD levels. None of them have shown to extend lifespan even in animal studies, but uh, NMN at least has some human studies that it improves insulin sensitivity and even improves gait speed. One recent 2023 human study showed that NMN incre increased like walking speed in the elderly, which is obviously good because gait speed is associated with reduced mortality. So the faster you walk, then uh, generally you're in better health and uh, the lower your risk of mortality. And I do think that NMN certainly has a lot of longevity benefits if your NAD levels are low, but it's again, the evidence isn't completely there yet. And there could be like, uh, you know, the aspect of price. So it's more expensive than uh, regular kind of supplements. So I'll put it into good tier, both of these. 
both of these um, are in the good tier because they do improve at least in terms of energy production and some aspects of metabolic health. But uh, the price is, but we don't have like actual life extension effects seen yet. And um, the price is also a bit higher. Niacinamide, so this one is different from NMN and nicotinamide riboside because it's cheaper and it works through a different pathway. So it works through the NAD recycling pathway which uh, improves aspects of NAD recycling. So I'll, I'm going to base this higher than NMN and nicotinamide riboside because you want to support the NAD recycling, which is more important than just taking an NAD booster, if that makes sense. And niacin as well, it does raise NAD levels similarly, but it also has like additional cholesterol benefits that it improves your lipid profile. The only downside to niacin is that in large doses or uh, to chronic use, it can cause some aspects of insulin resistance and obviously it creates this flush effect that your skin feels like it's burning. So that's the kind of a negative side effect of that. Quercetin, a senolytic. Um, now, I think the evidence of quercetin um, is limited. So uh, I'm going to put it into OK tier. We don't have any life extension effects. It's a senolytic. It helps to clear senescent cells. Same with fisetin. Uh, it's also a senolytic. So uh, yes, senolytics may have some uh, benefits for slowing down aging. It's like the senescent cells are a hallmark of aging. And the older you get, the more senescent cells you accumulate, especially in a disease state. And like clearing the senescent cells might have some longevity benefits for sure. It's just that uh, we don't have any like, you know, evidence-based protocols yet. And uh, the, the human clinical trials are also kind of lacking. So we don't know whether or not you know, or how frequently or how much senolytics you need to use, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, besides that, you, there's also like some other natural ways to clear senescent cells, like fasting, exercise, and those kind of things. So uh, it's hard to say whether or not it's worthwhile to kind of supplement uh, these things. And even then, we don't know how effective these supplements as senolytics are. They certainly have anti-inflammatory effects, antioxidant effects, but we don't know if they're even effective for, or we don't know if they have any like meaningful effect on in terms of senolytics, like if the effect is any uh, kind of worth it. Apigenin, as well, it's uh, it's you know obviously it's a herb or it's a compound you get from herbs like parsley and stuff like that. Some of the benefits of apigenin are like anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, similar to kind of senolytics. It has senolytic properties. The additional benefit of apigenin is also that it's a CD38 inhibitor, which increases your NAD levels. Now, the yeah, the issue with apigenin is though that it's quite, again, like it's if you start to add all these, these things up, then your budget for the supplements are going to be quite, it's going to be quite big <laughs> if you start taking all of these supplements. So that's, that's why like the price to benefit ratio, I would say is probably not worthwhile. You, there's like natural ways to manage your CD38 levels, like with exercise and sleep and some dietary sources. So I'd much rather just get the apigenin from the herbs that you add to your food rather than get them from a supplement because the supplement is pretty pricey. Uh, next up, we have taurine. So uh, taurine is uh, kind of the new brother or uh, sister in the club of anti-aging uh, supplements or longevity supplements because of this recent mouse study showing that taurine supplementation increased lifespan by up to 10 to 15 percent or 12%, uh, I don't remember precisely. But uh, yes, your taurine levels do go down with age and taurine might have some beneficial effects in terms of longevity. But uh, we don't have any human clinical trials. It was only a mouse study. So it's too early to say whether or not taurine has like actual longevity effects. So uh, based on that, I would put it into like a good tier because taurine has benefits for exercise. It has benefits for endurance and heart function, and it might have some longevity effects as well. And it's pretty cheap. It's not as expensive as like NMN. It's kind of as as expensive as glucosamine, for example. So it's uh, not an expensive supplement, but it has quite a lot of nice uh, benefits that I think would be uh, worth it. Vitamin C. So uh, this one uh, is, you know, obviously very like known, safe and uh, highly used antioxidant as a supplement. And, uh, you know, besides that, it can also help with collagen synthesis. The issue with vitamin C is that, you know, antioxidant supplementation actually is associated with some higher aspects of mortality, especially, 
you know, if you're probably doing it like chronically or in like a very large doses, so you don't want to take like large amounts of antioxidants all the time. Small amounts of antioxidants probably is uh, okay. And uh, that's why I'm putting it into the okay tier as well. There's probably no side effects to vitamin C as a supplement. If you take like 100 milligrams of vitamin C every day, then chances are nothing not, not, like you're going to, you're not going to experience any downside. Uh, you will help with collagen synthesis for sure, and you reduce maybe some aspects of inflammation on the body with a small antioxidant effect. But uh, like large doses of antioxidants like vitamin C, probably I personally wouldn't uh, do that, if that makes sense. Next up, we have two forms of vitamin E, tocotrienols and tocopherol. So, uh, you know, some people say that the um, tocopherol is uh, the more beneficial one that has like health effects and uh, the tocotrienols are the ones that are actually associated with increased uh, mortality risk similar to vitamin C. So I would say that, uh, you know, certainly you wouldn't need to supplement vitamin E in most cases because, you know, you get the vitamin D E from a lot of uh, foods and uh, yeah, based on at least currently, you know, vitamin E use is actually associated with increased mortality risk. So I personally think that it's not kind of worth it you know, and I would put it into the bad tier because, yeah, like the evidence just isn't there that it would have any like life extension effects, if that makes sense. And uh, based on like some actual studies, then it might even be associated with increased uh, risk. Next up, we have collagen. So uh, I think this one is God tier because everyone pretty much needs collagen and uh, everyone will lose collagen the older you get. And that decrease already starts in your 20s. So if you think that you're waiting until you're 40 or 50 until you start taking collagen, then it's already too late. Your collagen starts to decrease already in your 20s. And uh, supplementing collagen peptides in uh, multiple human clinical trials has been found to reverse aspects of skin aging and wrinkles and stuff like that. So the earlier you start with collagen, then the better it is. And there's literally like, no side effects uh, to collagen uh, if you take it only like 10 to 20 grams a day. Hyaluronic acid, so uh, this one is another skin supplement, helps with skin moisturization and aspects of skin aging. There is some evidence that it uh, does actually help with that, with the skin aging. Um, it's, it's just that uh, it's kind of, again, more, you know, if you take collagen and you probably don't need to take hyaluronic acid additionally but it's not going to hurt it's just that the price aspect again like if you start taking all of these then uh, your budget is going to be pretty high i'll put it into okay tier it doesn't have any side effects it uh, does help with skin aging but it's probably not as good as collagen or glycine for that matter allicin so this one is from garlic you're not going to get significant amounts of allicin from just eating garlic unless you're eating like 20 cloves of garlic and allicin does have benefits for lowering blood sugar as well as uh, improving lipids and is also antibacterial so it's good for the gut and uh, helping with like dysbiosis for example so allicin uh, i think is uh, very cheap and is also effective so i'll put it into good tier inositol uh, this supplement is uh, mostly beneficial for you know, blood sugar management and inositol is involved with neurotransmitter production and uh, just sleep even because of the neurotransmitter connection. So it's effective and it's pretty cheap. It's sweet, similar to glycine. So uh, yeah, I think it's a very like a good supplement. We're going to put it into the good tier. All right, next up we have spermidine. So uh, spermidine, um, is also becoming quite popular as a supplement based on a few uh, studies showing that higher dietary spermidine intake is associated with reduced mortality and even reduced heart disease. But the issue is that that applies to uh, dietary spermidine. <laughs> so we don't have any uh, human or we don't have any actual study showing that supplemental spermidine has those same effects. So I'll put it into kind of, you know, bad tier because you're, you're going to get the, the, the spermidine required amount from uh, dietary sources very easily if you eat some foods that are high in spermidine. Like if you eat some wheat germ, which is actually another of this uh, spermidine food as a supplement and is also high in time TMG, I'll put it into good tier because its actual food is probably more bioavailable through that mechanism and it's a higher source of spermidine and uh, it will also be beneficial for actually contributing to your dietary spermidine intake. So wheat germ is one of those foods. You can also get spermidine from mushrooms, cheeses, and uh, a little bit of meat, and mostly like just uh, 
you know, vegetables and stuff like that, those are already going to give you adequate amount of uh, spermidine. So the supplement spermidine isn't even, I think uh, there is actually one study showing that the supplement spermidine isn't, is, isn't even like absorbed, uh, so to say. So I wouldn't, you know, take the um, supplemental spermidine. Next up, we have a multivitamin. So yes, there are a few like human studies showing that multivitamin use is associated with uh, reduced cognitive decline and uh, that's it pretty much <laughs> at least that's what i've uh, the only one i've seen like multivitamin first of all you're going to get a bunch of different uh, vitamins and minerals whether or not you need those vitamins and minerals depends on your diet i think you would be much better off by targeting the supplements that you need of course it's very convenient to take a multivitamin that has a bunch of different uh, vitamins and minerals it's just that uh, you know sometimes it can be overkill and uh, sometimes it just makes expensive urine but because, you know, there is the association of, uh, you know, the vitamin, multivitamin use with reduced cognitive decline, I'll put it into OK tier because we have, you know, some evidence to suggest that it might help with the brain aging at least. Uh, but because it's kind of a shotgun approach rather than a sniper shot, <laughs> which I would much rather prefer, then I'll put it into OK tier. Methylene blue is a supplement uh, I have you know, mentioned every once in a while, I will we'll, I will be making a video, a dedicated video to this as well. And uh, methylene blue, it's not a fish tank cleaner. Of course, it can be used as a fish tank cleaner, but methylene blue is actually uh, on the list of the World Health Organization's uh, list of essential medicines. So it's used for some medical conditions. And uh, yes, it's a legit medicine, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's not uh, some sort of a fish tank cleaner that some people just like to use. And there are some longevity benefits for methylene blue as well, mostly through inhibition of oxidative stress and uh, skin aging as well. So the, it protects the skin from oxidative stress, both UV radiation and whatever other forms of oxidative stress you might be exposed to. It protects the mitochondria from oxidative stress, so it helps energy production lowers the burden of aging on the mitochondria and it also uh, triggers uh, this it triggers like uh, fibroblasts and wound healing in the skin so it has both mitochondrial benefits it has skin aging benefits and it also has been found to improve uh, short-term memory in humans so it is a good some supplement it's a good longevity supplement actually so you would want to still like microdose it like using these tinctures or these trochies take like one milligram you don't want to like take large amounts um, but yes it's an actual legit like longevity supplement in my opinion molecular hydrogen so this is another like less conventional uh, anti-aging supplement and the biggest effect has to do with the uh, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits and uh, hydrogen is obviously the most abundant molecule in the universe uh, pretty much and uh, it uh, has anti-inflammatory effects is just that we don't have like a ton of human studies the difference between molecular hydrogen and other antioxidants is that it apparently doesn't blunt the oxidative stress from exercise which is good so molecular hydrogen appears to be like an adaptogenic antioxidant so if you need to lower your inflammation then it's going to lower your inflammation but it doesn't interfere with uh, the adaptations you get from exercise for example which is great which means that you can take it after exercise uh, but I would much rather, yeah, like take it in the morning or before bed away from exercise if you want to be safe. But it does have anti-inflammatory effects. It's just it's a bit more expensive again. And it's certainly not like the first line of defense uh, in terms of antioxidants that you want to take every day. Like I'd much rather take glycine and NAC every day uh, or like uh, glucosamine and vitamin C even. But uh, yeah, it certainly has anti-inflammatory uh, benefits. Spirulina. Another dietary form of uh, spirulina, although not as high as wheat germ, spirulina may also have some other, uh, you know, beneficial compounds. It's, it's actually like a good plant-based source of some iron, uh, although not like heme iron, obviously, but uh, it's okay. Like it can bind to some, you know, compounds. It can be used as a binder. It can help to detox, uh, but it doesn't have like any life extension effects for sure. Uh, so I'll put it into okay dear, tier. Next up, we have uh, DHEA. So uh, this is a precursor to testosterone. For the elderly, it certainly will help with hormones, even in men and women. So uh, if you have low testosterone as a man, then it does raise your testosterone levels naturally as well. 
But if you have already normal or high testosterone levels as a man, then you probably don't see any difference. Your DHEA levels do go down with age. So you could expect to benefit from DHEA if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s. Uh, for women, DHEA even has like anabolic effects, so it can even improve uh, muscle growth and fat loss, so to say, uh, because their like testosterone levels are obviously naturally significantly lower. So I'll put it, and there's no like little to no side effects, but in some countries you can't get it uh, over the counter. So that's why I'll put it, you know, it's it's safe, but you have, you know, if you want to be safe, then consult with your doctor or take a blood test to see what your DHEA levels are or your uh, sex hormones. But it's uh, still good for the elderly, specifically. Like, it's the natural alternative to TRT. Whether or not you need TRT, you need to consult with your doctor. But uh, you can take DHEA with less barriers and with uh, significantly less, you know, commitment. Like, DHEA isn't going to suppress your natural testosterone production <laughs> like TRT will. If you take TRT, then your natural testosterone levels will, uh, or your natural testosterone production will decrease. So you're kind of dependent of the TRT. And TRT certainly is beneficial for someone who has low testosterone levels and they need to take TRT. But if you just have like a little bit of low testosterone um, and it's not like clinically low, then maybe DHEA is kind of the first step to try out. Cocoa flavanols or just dark chocolate or uh, raw cacao. Uh, we have uh, the Cosmos trial, <laughs> which are used cocoa flavanols daily supplementation and they did find that the uh, cocoa flavanol use was associated with reduced cardiovascular disease risk and cardiovascular disease mortality and I'm a huge fan of dark chocolate and uh, raw cacao because of the high polyphenol content and uh, yeah it's it's very high in polyphenols and higher polyphenol intake is associated with reduced mortality reduced cardiovascular disease and uh, you know uh, if you take it as a supplement, then you can expect no side effects. If you start eating like several bars of dark chocolate, then obviously the number one is that you're just getting too many calories, which will kind of <laughs> like it's, it's counterproductive in that sense if you're just getting overweight from eating too much dark chocolate. And uh, some people also get like the oxidate issues from uh, like cacao and dark chocolate. But most people don't. If you just take like one square of dark chocolate like I do, then you're probably not going to get any side effects. If you take the cocoflavanol supplement, then you probably also avoid uh, those side effects. And last supplement on the list here is lithium orotate. So uh, lithium, you know, you would think that, what am I going to start licking batteries or something? Uh, that's not the case. Lithium orotate as a supplement has uh, actually shown to improve aspects of cognitive decline and neurodegeneration. So it's uh, nootropic, it's uh, neuroprotective, and uh, it certainly is important for brain aging. And the funny thing about lithium is that higher lithium content in the water, the drinking water, is also associated with reduced homicide and reduced suicide. <laughs> so uh, low lithium or lithium deficiency might have some, let's say, uh, negative effects on mental health and negative effects on brain health and brain function. So I do think that lithium is a very beneficial nootropic agent and uh, for brain aging, like for brain aging and uh, anti-aging for the brain stack, I would certainly include it there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put it into the good tier because yeah, there's plenty of evidence to show that it is neuroprotective and beneficial for brain aging and even reduce, you know, the risk of homicide and suicide. So there you have it. This is kind of the tier that I put together off the go right now. You know, you could certainly change a few things around. Like you could definitely put resveratrol in the junk tier. You could put vitamin E in the junk tier as well, for example. And, uh, you know, you could put rapamycin based on some metrics to like a lower tier, like a bad tier. Uh, but because it is, there is evidence in animals that it is a very potent life extension molecule, then I'm going to put it into the God tier. And I do think that, you know, at some point we will get the human clinical trials that we need to like show that, yes, rapamycin actually has some nice longevity benefits in humans. Metformin could also be in the junk tier for based on some metrics, like based on the reduction in testosterone and VO2 max. But, uh, you know, metformin obviously saves a lot of people who have diabetes, whether or not it will actually be beneficial for non-diabetics, uh, is up for debate. You know, there's you could you could argue both ways. You could argue that yes, it inhibits blood sugar levels, it reduces your hemoglobin A1C, all very true. 
but it can also have you know some other negative effects. I do think that metformin probably is uh, still a very effective and very powerful longevity supplement. It's just that it requires a lot of commitment in some sense, and uh, you need to know like what you are signing up for if you are taking you know any, any of these supplements for sure, but especially rapamycin and uh, metformin. So there you have it. This is the current ranked list of the longevity supplements. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.